Goodwill hunting. It just honestly seemed like that snippet of a moment. I was just like, oh crap, I'm in the whole context yeah. going in my mind right now. <laughs> yeah. Men, men's drama. I think out of any movie here, that's probably the one I relate with the most. Mm -hmm. Because I've, I've been in therapy for many years and I've had my breakthroughs. And I've never had like this freaking complicated relationship with my therapist. It's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, I've never had like this dynamic where I'm like resistant against my therapist like this that. This is most of my sessions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>What's going on, Reject Nation? Craig Help here. And it's John here. So we just did a video for Patreon where, uh, you know, I teared up quite a bit, actually. <laughs> I looked over the footage, you can see a tear. <laughs> and I thought, why not keep the tradition of crying going? Dad, I'll cry here. One of our reward tiers on a certain Patreon pledge is uh, whatever you request, we will do and put it up on YouTube. Whether it be a video topic or reacting and discussing the video. And today's Andrew Turpening's special video request. Top 10 Guy Cry Movies. Oh yeah, here we go. This list is from whatchathemojo.com. Let's see if yeah. I cried at any of these. Is, is someone cutting onions in here? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 guy crime movies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at films that we feel are the most effective at hitting all the right notes to break down the typical macho male stereotypes and that demonstrate that men can have a soft side too. For any dudes watching, be warned. These splits will probably make you fall into your pillow all night long. Also, spoiler <laughs> alert is in order. I don't cry ever. Uh oh. You haven't seen this. Do you know what happens? I can kind of guess Number what 10, happens. Logan. And it is better this way. That's a guy crying movie for sure. Because I suck at this. Who would have expected a movie about an aged mutant with razor sharp claws and a wicked temper to hit us right in the field? Well, thanks to director James Mangold's smart decision to move Does. away from superheroics for a more personal tale about family and redemption, the third solo Wolverine flick was just as emotionally moving as it was extremely violent. Whether you have tears of joy from seeing Logan's triumphant berserker rages one last time, or are bawling from the loving bond he creates with Laura, this is one comic book movie that tugs the heartstrings far more than any of its counterparts. Oh yeah. <laughs> Show. Oh yeah. <laughs> You have to learn how to live with that. Number nine, Furious Seven. Oh, the boy, every That's time. Every time. Oh. After the tragic death of Paul Walker, the seventh film in this franchise was delayed in order to give the loved ones time to mourn and the filmmakers time to decide how to respectfully continue without the actor. Oh Alongside God. the movie's resonant themes about the importance of family and friendship, the final scene in particular packs one heck of a heart-wrenching conclusion. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell you could leave without saying goodbye. As we see Dom and Brian driving alongside each other on an open road, we're treated to flashbacks of times the two shared in prior films, paying tribute to both the character and Paul Walker himself, and indicating that his memory will never die as they both oh, go their separate ways. That lives. scene. Oh. Wiz. I'll see you again. Number eight, Rudy. Yeah. Rudy. Everything I possibly can. Mr. Portal. We all have a dream, and that's what makes this film based on a true story so powerful. Rudy wants nothing more than to play football at the University of Notre Dame, despite a series of overwhelming odds and unexpected roadblocks. I care what kind of job I did. If it doesn't produce results, it doesn't mean anything. As we watch Rudy struggle to convince the school to admit him, we really begin to feel for his hardship while simultaneously rooting for him based on his undying determination. You ready, Tina? I've been ready for this my whole life. Once Rudy finally achieves what he wanted to do, don't be surprised if you find yourself standing and cheering for his accomplishment. Oh, yeah. As we all know what it's like to struggle towards a goal and the rewarding pride we sense upon achieving it. Number seven, The Green Mile. Sorry, I was getting room for you. The concept of a personal journey during life in prison isn't a new one, as it's been done several times in movies, as in the other Stephen King tale, the Oscar nominated The Shawshank Redemption. Get busy living. Get busy However, we argue that the Green Mile delivers its heartfelt message more effectively. Much of this can be attributed oh. to the stellar performances from Tom Hanks and Michael Clark Duncan oh. as we watch their characters bond and share their personal experiences and perspectives. Kids want to stay. Yes, don't make a kid. The subject matter is dark, but if the film successfully teaches us anything, it's how to hold on to hope even in the direst of situations. 
If that's not worthy of shedding a tear or two, then what is? You can't have what's in your heart. Number six, Warrior. Warrior. Oh, forgive me, but you, you forget power. Brothers fight. It's just sibling nature. But to have a square off in a brutal MMA straps. Fight is another yeah, thing entirely. Right. Warrior establishes that the relationship between brothers Tommy and Brendan hasn't exactly been all that buddy-buddy, with a great deal of distance created between them over the years. You got ball talking about forgiveness. Despite their estranged family dynamics, as well as the dozens of punches and kicks they toss at each other's faces, these two brothers manage to put their differences aside and realize how much they actually care for one another. Yeah, those it's two a actors, stunning man. display of the unconditional love found in brotherhood and packs quite the punch. Oh, that's right. Number five, Forrest Gump. Oh, you ain't seen this. I haven't seen Forrest Gump. It's one of my problems. <laughs> Double feature, Green Mile, Forrest Gump. Struggles and triumphs of Forrest Gump is enough to make even the most stoic, burly man bawl his eyes out. Tom Hanks is no stranger to emotionally charged films, like the epic drama Castaway. <laughs> his tender, kind-hearted performance is Mr. Gump, a man born a little different, but still with a heart of gold, who's trying to find his place in the world that hits way harder. <laughs> Whether Forrest is explaining Tom to him how he understands <laughs> the concept of love, meeting his son, or summing up life with a box of chocolates, this man brings us some valuable life lessons, and we should bring along some tissues. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. Number four, Interstellar. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, was born on Earth. His Force <laughs> Awakens reaction. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exhausted. Former NASA pilot Cooper has no choice but to help in a reconnaissance mission to find a new planet for humanity to call home. Zig number four. Human race means Cooper has to leave his family behind, which includes his young daughter Murph, with whom he shares an incredibly strong bond. Mm -hmm. Coming back. <laughs> Any fathers watching would feel the weight of having to leave their child for a greater good. Pouring even yeah. more salt on the wound, Cooper receives video messages from Earth and has to witness all the events he is missing in his daughter's life. Like force of Awakens scene, scene just totally changed the uh, Superman. We're inclined to join him. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, oh, Goodwill Hunting. It's not your Goodwill fault, man. I'm afraid. What, what, what am I afraid of? In this extremely oh, personal story you. about finding your place in the world it's not and your moving fault. on from the hardships of life, there's no shortage of moments to send waterfalls flowing out from your eyes. I'm pumped. So let the healing begin. As we learn more about Will's many difficulties in life, we feel more connected with him and whatever pain he goes through, and we fully sympathize. Take your pick for the saddest scene. But most would agree it's the powerfully acted and written It's Not Your Fault sequence. Oh shit, I already feel it in <laughs> With all that in mind, it's not your fault either if you end up crying at this time. <laughs> Grab a buddy and hug it out. It'll be okay. I can see. You know what the best part of my day is? For about 10 seconds from when I pull up to the curb when I get to your door. Number two, Brian's song. I love Never Brian. seen it, never seen it. And I'd like all of you to love him too. Sports are recognized for developing friendships and bringing people together despite difficulties of modern life. Nowhere is this more evident than in Brian's song, an ABC TV movie that was later released in theaters. I think it's working. Wow. It was working. I must make it a good movie. Stop I'm getting you overconfident. Based in the mid 60s, when racial tension was highly prevalent within American society, football players Brian and Gail shatter all societal norms of their day by forming an unbreakable friendship despite the colors of their skin. Yeah, I am. Uh, I think I'm pregnant. Their shared connection served as a symbol of civility and harmony in an era that otherwise frowned upon it, as they stayed by one another's side through all trials and tribulations, including Brian developing cancer. Now that's a true bromance right there. Of what then? I'm trying, yeah. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. <laughs> Armageddon! The entire planet are focused tonight on those 14 brave souls traveling into the heaven. That man's an obsessed with This man would happen. go on to make Transformers the last night. Okay. Left. That's what wrong. I'm not gonna let you go. Hey, man, I got you. He's like one, one of the funniest people. Feel movies. the dreams. Yeah. Feel the dreams, yeah. number one, huh? Iowa farmer Ray Kinsella is a simple man who one day hears voices urging him to build something, which Ray interprets as a baseball field. 
He sets up a baseball diamond in his cornfield, and before he knows it, baseball stars of the past, like Shoeless Joe Jackson, visit him. And Shoeless Joe Jackson. <laughs> of course it is. I mean, you didn't believe me? Despite others taunting him, and the fact that it threatens to send him into bankruptcy, Ray maintains the field. In the end, this field allows Ray to learn more about himself than he ever imagined, as well as providing him the chance to introduce his daughter to her grandfather, as he ends up being one of the many visitors on the field. Hi, John. Hi, Karen. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe. Oh, for Pursuit of Happiness, yeah. that's one that definitely makes me cry. Yeah, yeah definitely. Pursuit of Happiness is, is the one I wish was on this list. The two movies that definitely make me cry every time. But that's not necessarily like a guy movie. Like that's that's kind of a, just a general drama. Cause like one of my guy cry movies is, is The Grey. Cause that movie's like really okay. intense and it was more about the characters than I was expecting from the trailer. So yeah, by the time you get to the end, you're like, oh my God, Mine's I missed uh, it so much. Re Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> yeah, totally. When I mean, Optimus is getting his ass kicked. Optimus! Optimus! You know, the Shia LaBeouf red eyes, you know, never fully tearing, yeah. like tear uh, welling up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah totally. That's, no, that's, that's not a the real cry for me. <laughs> for me. So let's talk about some of these movies right here. Films, the films it's, it's okay list. to cry at. It's a good list. It's a good list. I feel like a lot of people don't like watch Mojo anymore these days. I don't know why. Logan, yeah, you know, I can. Sure. I cried more the second time I saw it. The first time I saw it, I didn't really cry. I was definitely impacted and I loved this shit out of the entirety of that film. I didn't really cry. I do remember though, John doesn't really, I feel like I'm more likely to cry than John nine times out of 10. Well, I cry more now than I used to. But I remember watching Logan and that ending scene when he's when he's holding Laura's hand. Here, two dudes to my left, you and Andrew. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of sniffle. I just hear you, you guys what like they made you. bawling to the left of me. It was a moment in my life where I was like, is there something wrong with me? Why am I not them? I cry more than these two combined. <laughs> Why am I not? I cry in movies now pretty pretty freely. I used to be oh. one of those people who was like, nothing make me cry. <laughs> and now I've let go of that considerably. Yeah, now it's, now it's become an argument like, yeah, we cry. I yeah, cry I, cry, I, cry, I totally I cry. cry. I, I, I have more emotions than you, motherfucker. I want to <laughs> cry right now just because we're arguing and it hurts yeah. my feelings. <laughs> Furious seven, Furious 7, that scene. The thing about Furious 7 is, I think you have to have investment in the franchise and you totally. have to be aware of Paul Walker's actual passing. Like, like I'm wondering if like 30 years from now, if when people watch like the revisit Furious 7 or like people who are like 15 by the time 30 years from now, if they watch it, will they cry? I feel like, especially when the film came out, people were crying. I was, I ball when I see that <laughs> moment. I've seen that scene twice and every time I see it, I cry. I feel um, like it'll still be impactful, but but I do think the context and growing up knowing Paul Walker yeah. is kind of integ integral to that. Yeah, exactly. That's also wonderful for people who don't grow up with the Fast movies or don't grow up with Paul Walker, who might not even know that he died. Yeah, yeah. Uh, will they be like as affected by that moment or are they going to be like, what's up with this goodbye scene? Because, <laughs> you know, like out of context, it's a little bit like, what's going on? Where'd he go? Yeah, where'd he go? What's going on with this scene? <laughs> I don't understand. Did he die? I can see why it's higher up on the list because I think easily, if we're going to take these 10 movies, this is one of the top too. That makes me cry a lot. Well, and this one became a guy cry movie because of outside circumstances. True. You know, it's not about... It's not about the context of the film. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's like if he hadn't passed, then this would just be another yeah. rollicking adventure. And we wouldn't have gotten Scott Eastwood and life would have been a lot better. <laughs> Ouch. Rudy, I saw when I was a little kid. I don't really remember it. I remember people chanting Rudy. <laughs> That's all I really take from that movie. Yeah. I, I remember it a bit. I mean, I've seen it a couple times. I don't know if I would cry watching Rudy, but I feel like that's a good example of a guy cry movie. I feel like sports is an easy go-to yeah, oh yeah, genre. Especially for guy cry, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's two movies that were featured here that I don't, uh, I, that I, I have a list. All my notes on this computer, I have a list of films I must watch because I keep getting crap for not having seen them. It's not one of the ones on the list, but they do mention it, Shawshank Redemption. I'm so glad I didn't spoil it because it's been so many years I've had a chance to see this movie and I still haven't seen it. Hey man, we'll do a double feature. We'll do Green Mile and Shawshank. The Green Mile, um, I'm glad I they, didn't, they didn't fully ruin the movie here. Green Mile, that. I saw it by myself. The ending got ruined for me and I watch it by myself one day 
and I'm still like, oh, streams. I don't know why. Why? Like, wow. Even though I know what's going to happen. Because it's a long movie. I think it's like a three hour film. Damn. And, but, but, and so you're really put on a journey. And when you're on that journey and then you're watching the finale take place, it is like, no, why? Why? Yeah, it's it's very, very heartbreaking. Yeah, that's a tearjerker for sure. Well, and I was getting sentimental during that clip just because I, I love Michael Clark Duncan mm -hmm. and I miss him. Warrior, man. That, that That's a film that touches me because I have a brother and we've had like complications in the past and stuff. So And we both did Taekwondo together. Yeah, <laughs> so we've never yeah, had yeah, something yeah. like this for his like MMA scenario. Well, and the, and the sons and also their father you exactly. know, dynamic. Exactly, yeah. There. That's like an ultimate guy cry movie. I think out of yeah. any movie on this list, because this is about being a man Having a brother and issues with your dad. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's and it's super like super dude. A drama that centers around MMA. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. It's like, yeah. That is the guy cry movie. Yeah. Arguably speaking. It's crazy seeing footage of Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton in the ring when you're yeah. like, damn, these guys are way more popular now since this movie came out. Yeah, this was back, I saw this at a test screening yeah. back before I was really mm -hmm. familiar, familiar with the both of them. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even that huge of a hit. But I remember people really liked it. It's though. a great movie. I remember people liked it a lot. And when you, when you see this footage, you're like, damn, these guys are so much more famous now. Freaking traps on <laughs> Tom Hardy has this incredible ability to impress you with how he changes his body. Yeah. And his you mannerisms, know. and that was the thing too. Seeing them in the ring, I was like, "Tom Hardy's gonna fight Joel Edgerton." Yeah. He's like, he's huge. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "How big did Joel get in this movie?" <laughs> Forrest Gump, I can't really touch on because that's one of my, that's one of the movies where people yell at me for not having seen it yet. I guess Forrest Gump is a is a guy. I, I don't know if I is would personally guy? call it a guy movie because like it goes so many places and it's about like a life. Yeah. You know, which I feel like is, you know, uh, accessible for everybody. But, you know, there is some stuff in it that is definitely guy-ish. There's a heavy amount of war in it, mm -hmm. you know. So there, there are things that even gents would tear up at and right. not give each other crap about. Right, right. Because we're not allowed to have emotions. Right. Vulnerability, poof. <laughs> Whatever, bruh. But that Interstellar, because when I saw that scene in Interstellar, like when I was actually watching it, I did tear up. What he's with that that slow panning shot of him crying, or is it yeah. panning in, or is it just focused on? It? It's just it's just a still shot of him crying. I mean, there might be a very slow, you know, yeah. tracking in, but yeah, for the most part, it's uninterrupted. I'm so curious cry. how he did that scene. Was he actually watching something? They play a video for him to work off of? Because a lot of times when you do scenes like that on set, they can't have the background audio going. They need, yeah. they need to just have the actor there and he's like just using his imagination purely it's gotta be and clean. nothing to really work off of. Because there's probably a bunch of crew members behind that camera that are like in his eye line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> so I'm really wondering how they got that shot. Damn, that, that reaction action video whoever put that together with the force when they oh put the force God, awakens yeah. clip in there that has totally forever changed that moment for me because now i just end up laughing at it whenever i see that scene when that first popped up i was sort of thinking is that a guy cry you know i got really into the criteria well, of the list yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it's like a sci-fi epic the thing yeah. is like there's that one sequence i think that, that you would mm -hmm. cry during and i remember being very impacted very very overtaken by that movie goodwill hunt who <laughs> just honestly seemed like that snippet of a moment I was just like, oh crap, I'm in the whole context yeah. going in my mind right now. <laughs> yeah. Men, men's drum. I think out of any movie here, that's probably the one I relate with the most mm -hmm. because I've, I've been in therapy for many years and I've had my breakthroughs. That specific scene, you know, it's not your fault because a lot of the time when you hold on to a lot of weight, you blame yourself for so many things. Mm -hmm. So something as simple as the repetition of it's not your fault, the affirmation of that being instilled in yeah. him and him resisting it because like holding on to the weight of response responsibility and blame and stuff has been part of a way to suppress mm -hmm. how he really feels and that breakthrough like I, that is it's one of the most beautifully acted moments in all oh, of yeah. movie history for me both robin williams and matt damon in yeah. that scene that's a magic beautiful moment. beautiful that scene definitely oh that that gets to my heart every single time i couldn't have said it better if mm -hmm. I wanted to. I haven't seen Brian's song, but I did hear so that- So used that, to him with a mustache. <laughs> I heard that James Caan and Billy D. Williams uh, did not get along on set. That uh, really? James Caan was the actual real rate. No, I'm just making it all <laughs> <laughs> He decided to sign on despite his intense yeah. hatred for black people. <laughs> That's me providing context for a movie I haven't seen. Right I would there. like to see this. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to see it sometime. I feel like it is a, a notable 
film and probably a good one to watch right it now. It must be good to be a, like a made-for-TV movie it's that exactly goes on TV and they're like, the people love it, we gotta put, put it, it in the, the theaters. theaters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that, that doesn't happen every day for a made-for-TV film. Well, that seems like a prime choice for a list like this. And I haven't seen Field of Dreams since I was a kid. Honestly, don't even remember it. I don't. I don't, I don't even I know. I feel like that's a guy cry movie. I don't sure. even know what make me cry. That's another remember. one of those like men's dramas. Yeah, that's a total men drama movie. You know, where it's not even, it doesn't have like a genre element, aside from like uh, thoughtful fantasy to draw on, you know, it's not, cause like Interstellar to me is like, I don't think of it first when I think of guy cry movies, cause I mostly think of it as like a sci-fi epic. Right. You know, where, but Field of Dreams, yeah, I'm like, this guy's like getting in touch with his family and his and his grandfather and, and, and the history of baseball past and, and all sorts of, it's been a while since I've seen it too, but yeah, this is, this is prime. I, mm -hmm. I wonder what it would be like watching it as a, at least more of an adult, because the last time I saw it was, yeah. you know, at least 10 years ago. It seems like a prime choice, though. I don't know, I feel like Pursuit of Happiness could have been on here. It's about a dad and his son, and it's like a guy movie, in, in some ways. It's not like a manly man you would, movie. I don't think guy, like, you just put it on with your dad. Interstellar is on. Well, Interstellar is like sci-fi. Interstellar has monster. the sci-fi edge. That's the thing, is like, now I'm- Green Mile, though? Green Mile's not a guy movie. I feel like in a list like this one, you are inevitably gonna have a couple that you find questionable, and a couple you're like, that fits the bill much more. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel you. I, I'm right. not going to try and talk you out of it too hard. Well, thanks, Andrew Turpening, for requesting that, my friend. Thanks, man. Good request, man. I, I thought uh, it led to some good discussion for John and I to have. Have you cried during all these films? Yeah. Do you cry, Andrew? Do you, you don't seem like cried? the kind of guy who cries. You cry? Well, you guys can subscribe to The Real Rejects. <gasps> subscribe to yeah. Watch Mojo. Click that notification bell if you like. And at <laughs> John Humphrey on Twitter and Instagram. And, of course, check out our Patreon. Wonderful stuff on there. Become a patron, eject today.